Hello friends, this video on how do organisms reproduce part 18 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the question is how are sperms produced? So now we have understood the different parts of the reproductive system and what do each of them do. So now let us see how are these sperms produced because they are the, they are the hero in this movie because they are needed for reproduction, the male sex cells. So how are they actually produced? Let us now see how are the sperms produced. So sperms are the male sex cells. So let us see how are they actually produced. So in the previous slide, we already discussed that testes are the organs where the sperms are produced. So here we will see the entire flow of sperms through the body of a human male. So sperms are produced in testes. So this is how they actually look like. They have got a head and a tail like structure. So here you can see this is how they look like with a tail like structure which helps them in moving. So from the testes these sperms move to the epididymis. So as I said the testes are made up of coil tubules and these tubules are lined by epithelium. So these epithelium divides to form the sperms. Now you will be surprised to know that almost around 12 billion sperms per month are produced. So that's a large number, right? So there are so many sperms which actually get produced every month. So now once these sperms are produced, they move from the testis to the epididymis. So what is epididymis? The coiled structure which is just connected to the testis. So epididymis stores the sperms and the sperms get matured there. So when the sperms are being stored in the epididymis, meanwhile they get matured. Now before the intercourse, when actually the mating takes place between a male and a female, so just before that is known as intercourse. So just before that intercourse, what happens? The penis gets stimulated. So the penis fills with blood, it becomes hard and erect. So now, and under this situation, the mature sperms from the epididymis moves to the vas deferens. So vas deferens is the tube which is going to carry the sperms. So when the penis becomes stimulated and erect, then the sperm starts moving from the epididymis to the vas deferens. Now this vas deferens will carry the sperm in the tube and then Semini vesic, seminal vesicles, these glands will pour their secretion into the vas deferens. So there will be a duct which will coming out, which will be coming out from the seminal vesicle. So this, what, what will seminal vesicle secrete? Seminal vesicle will secrete a viscous fluid which will help in the movement of the sperm inside the female body, right? Now this duct of the seminal vesicle will combine with the duct of the vas deferens and they will together form the ejaculatory duct. So the tube which is vas deferens will get connected with a tube from seminal vesicle. They both will join together to form ejaculatory duct. Now this ejaculatory duct will then pass through the prostrate gland wherein the prostrate gland will also give its secretion, the milky fluid secretion which will help the uh, sperms to move. And from there it will go to the urethra. So this ejaculatory duct will join the urethra and through urethra it will finally get ejaculated. Now another surprising fact to note here is that as I said there are almost 12 billion sperm which gets produced per month. Now of so many millions of sperms which get ejaculated only around 200 to 250 of them survive to reach the egg cell that means by the time they move from the male body to the female body many of the sperms die because of the change in medium some of them die while passing through the female body so at the end only some 200 to 300 are able to reach near the egg cell and only one finally becomes successful to fertilize the egg that means fusion finally happens between one sperm and one egg so just imagine so many sperms got produced but at the end only one sperm is successfully able to fertilize the egg. So let us look at this flow once again in the human body. So as I discussed the sperms are produced in the testis. So here you can see the sperms which are getting produced. So from testis they will move to the epididymis. 
So this is epididymis, that is the coiled tubule structure. Here the sperms will get stored and they will become mature here. So from this epididymis, they move to the vas deferens, that is the tube-like structure which will carry the sperm. From vas deferens, it will travel till it reaches the seminal vesicle. So this is the seminal vesicle. So you can see a small duct from the seminal vesicle. This duct will carry the secretions of the seminal vesicle and it will join the vas deferens. So after this duct joins the vas deferens, it forms ejaculatory duct. So this is the ejaculatory duct. Then this ejaculatory duct passes through the prostrate. So the prostrate, here is the prostrate. Prostrate will also pour its secretion and then it will join the urethra. So here you can see it was the urethra. So prostrate poured its secretion, urethra also came in. So it joined the urethra and through this urethra finally the sperms will get ejaculated. So where will the sperms get ejaculated? Now during the intercourse, the penis is inserted inside the vagina of the female body. So now when the sperms are ejaculated, they are actually ejaculated inside the female body. So this is how sperms are produced and they are put inside the female body. Clear? So now that we have spoken so much about a sperm, let us look at the structure of a sperm. How does a sperm look like? Sperms are very, very tiny bodies with a long tail. The main purpose of sperm is to move from one place to another. Because if you see in sexual reproduction, it is mainly the male germ cell which is motile, which has to move from their area of production to the area where the egg cell is located. So these are tiny bodies with long tail. So here you can roughly see the structure. They are mainly composed of genetic material. So sperms contain mostly genetic material. So in any cell, where is the genetic material concentrated? The genetic material is contained in the nucleus, right? Inside the nucleus, we have uh, the chromosomes and inside the chromosomes, we have the genes. So the genetic material is present inside the nucleus. Now, if you look at the sperm, this upper portion constitute, this is the head of the sperm. This portion is the middle piece and this is the tail. Now if you look at the head of the sperm, most portion of the head is occupied by the nucleus. So the sperms have a real big nucleus. That's because that is why it is said that sperms contain mostly genetic material. So the nucleus com com comprises of a good portion of the sperm and this outside membrane is the cell membrane and this is the neck of the sperm. So more or less this is how the structure of a sperm look like. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, Find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.